What is going on guys? We are back with another video today and we are doing another rebuild on Madden 22 and today it is a rebuild of the Indianapolis Colts who just ended up signing Stephon Gilmore. It's, it's funny because I don't know when that video will come up, maybe Tuesday, maybe Thursday, but I started a Packers rebuild and I mentioned Gilmore. I was like, why? It feels like, is, is he going to retire? I feel like I haven't heard his name at all in free agency. And then of course, you know, a little later on in the day, uh, you know, the, the, the Colts kind of did that thing, but obviously it doesn't really matter. It wasn't like a big part of the rebuild at all. Just something I mentioned that I'm going to get crap for when that comes out. They're like, uh, he's on with the Colts. I don't know who talks like that. Apparently that person, but I will say two things. One, well, some of the ratings are a little off because we are now officially in season two of this rebuild, but it's actually 2022 season, you know, the draft and all that. But two things. Uh, one, I'm a little surprised because even though Gilmore did play for the Panthers last season, you know, a kind of, I wouldn't say purely man coverage corner, but a guy that would obviously benefit more from a man coverage team is joining a very, very heavy zone coverage squad. But once again, it's Stephon Gilmore. Why wouldn't you give him a chance? I don't care if he's like, I'm terrible in zone coverage. I'm like, you know what? Even that like 10, 15, 20% in time we run, man, you're worth it, damn it. A two-year a two 23 seems like a steal. I know they guaranteed him 14, but that's still not even crazy. We'll try to get his number. I'm trying to think who is wearing his number, but... Uh, we got to change the stats. I actually was like, am I? I had to redo this because I was like, am I stupid? Stephon Gilmore is clearly a man corner, right? And the reason why it confused me when looking at this because, yeah, he dropped a bunch of ratings. So uh, obviously I'll have to fix that. Same with Matt Ryan. But this is a team that already was kind of dangerous and maybe one playmaking wide receiver away from potentially, and I know it's crazy to say, becoming the Super Bowl champions. This run game is nearly unstoppable. Obviously, it's going to require this offensive line to stay healthy. I'm not saying Jonathan Taylor isn't a good running back, because he obviously is, but man, would there be some running backs in that top five conversation if they were playing behind that line that has opened up actual freight train level holes. Of course, Pittman has kind of developed into a true number one. He actually was sneaky good last season, and there's some people like, sneaky good? I think he was in your face good. That's how good he was. Darius Leonard, he keeps improving, it seems. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, I've been a little harsh on him in the past. He is a good player. I think he is a little overrated, but at the same time, I don't know. There's not really anyone calling him, like, the best, so I'll, I'll cool it, you know? I'll say, hey, you know what, Darius? My bad. You're decent, all right? You're pretty good. Uh, but Buckner, going to be honest, I don't really remember hearing too much about Buckner, but I do know for a fact he's obviously had a very good, uh, you know, season, very good career uh, for the Colts already. You know, it seems to be worth the draft pick. Uh, I will say Rocky has seen, you know, he was actually developing really well for the Colts. They decided, you know what, we need edge a little bit more. Yannick Ngakwe seemingly plays pretty well for every team he joins, so... I don't see why joining a team with Buckner and some pretty good surrounding talent outside of him uh, would, you know, make that a different story. Safety is still probably something they need to address. I know Malik Hooker didn't turn out the way they wanted him to. Uh, where did he, did he play for the Cowboys? Did they re-sign him? I can't. He went to the Cowboys, right? No idea how he played there, but uh, that's, you know, more to him. I get. I don't even know what that's supposed to mean here. But, yeah, I mean, this is what the squad looks like as far as, you know, what we're going to be addressing first, even though we don't have a first speaking of, is obviously going to be wide receiver. Quarterback is a thing that, you know, maybe if somebody slips, you think about it, but Matt Ryan, we're going to boost his ratings. And because he's only 36, 37, I believe, maybe we'll give him a chance to, to keep his ratings a little bit rather than just, you know, let him die off because... I don't know, Matt Ryan still has some juice, I feel, uh, you know, lacking a little bit in the throw power in real life, but still has enough to get it done, and now he's actually going to be playing for something rather than what the Falcons is playing for more money, to be honest, and that's it. Paris Campbell, a guy that has obviously not really worked out for the Colts. I know uh, Colts management was talking about not giving up on him yet. Personally, I think we might have to. We'll see. Maybe he'll fit as a, a solid number three, but uh, you never know. He's 25, but he still has time. And the reason why I mention that is because, well, in the Packers rebuild, I'm not going to spoil it, but there is some names that is, you know, some names that are very surprising to me that actually developed. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's leave it at that. If you guys want to see that, you know, it'll be sometime down the line. So if you're new 
maybe subscribe, hit the little bell thingy, the notification, whatever, and maybe, you know, you'll be here to see it. And uh, maybe leave a like, whoever you are. And if you're not new, appreciate your continued support. It means a ton. It really does. Not even, I'm, I'm not joking. When would I ever joke? Well, I mean, that's not... You forget it. I just can't wait till the draft, to be honest, because these rebuilds, having to, like, replicate so many things is so annoying. Like, I always have to replicate the Deshaun Watson contract, the Rodgers contract, the Devontae contract, the Von Miller contract, uh, Chandler Jones, Tyreek Hill, uh, some of the draft picks here and there. I didn't worry about all of them this time because, of course, the only thing that's really affecting us is the second round. But, you know, you have to do those contracts. Otherwise, you know, there's, there's teams that... Like, for this one example, uh, you know, Matt Ryan was traded here, so the Falcons ate the dead hit, which would mean the Colts would just be on, like, free time, you know? They, they'd be super cheap to keep him, but, you know, we had to add that 52 mil, basically, over the next two years, which I believe they kind of fully guaranteed or came close to, just to knock that out right away. But, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just, please, draft, come sooner. And I've had that issue. What? All right, draft time, of course. Uh, ooh, the Colts actually have a high second. I thought that makes sense, actually. We might actually be in a better spot than I thought. I was expecting to be picking late second, but okay, I like it. Pick 10 can work. Olave goes 33, which is... I was hoping he would have been there for us. Uh, I, I thought, anyways, he would have no chance to be there for us, is what I meant to say, obviously. Uh, and I didn't know, and I probably should have looked first. I'm looking at Christian Watson as a potential number two. Sky Moore, maybe. Uh, Pickens would be pretty clutch, actually, and I'm, I'm kind of debating. I'm not really sure what I want to do here, uh, but I think wide receiver has to be the first thing this team takes. Most likely, tackle wouldn't hurt either, though. But all right, let's go to our picks, see who is there. Tariq Woolen to the Falcons would be very interesting. Um, all right, so we do have some options. Uh, you can see that Christian Watson is still there. You have George Pickens. DT, or wide receiver, seems to be there. There seems to be many options, and I honestly have no clue who to take. Because Ryman's gone, and I was thinking about going him. Uh, I didn't get the scout on the tackles that I wanted. I had Daniel Falele and Abraham Lucas. So there's that gone. Christian Watson would be interesting. And honestly, I think George Pickens is just staring us right in the face. Pretty good blocker. Uh, you know, solid number two. Hopefully hidden. He is. Uh, you know, lacking a little bit in the speed. I would like a little bit more. But hidden development trait, straight up starter number two right out the gate. I like it. And do we really only have... I thought they had another second. No? Yeah, I guess not. Let's go to the next round. The third round. If Daniel Falele is there right here, I might actually have to grab him. Falele, right? Falele, yeah. I mean, yeah. And he's gone. So we trade uh, up about 10 spots using 145 with an interdivisional Jaguars team to grab a starting tackle, Abraham Lucas. He's kind of like the last guy there. Uh, you know, there's a couple of other guys there that probably shouldn't be there still. Uh, but Lucas is kind of like the last guy there, and I know it's a little bit of a reach for him, but we need him. He's like the last decent tackle. He's 23, but, I mean, looks promising. Gonna grab him. Please be hidden. Normal, damn, and he's 23. 23 is unforgivable. And with this pick, it is very hard to pass on a safety. I'm gonna go with Nick Cross. Both very fast, and you know, both athletic players. Actually, what about the three cone on the 20 here? I don't know about real life too much, but he is more athletic here, technically, Cam. What about the, so elite speed. Elite. What about Nick Cross? What is his speed? Is it elite? It is elite. Great Excel, uh, solid agility with Cam being, uh, what do we got? Great and decent I don't know how this works because his three cone and his 20 yard are like way better. What the heck? Like, what do I do? 35.9 vert versus. What do we got? 35.5, a little bit stronger. He is taller. I'm going to take Nick Cross, whatever. Normal dev. I mean, he is insanely fast, obviously, but. Damn, another normal dev guy. Sweet. I want to look at uh, the other guy that we passed on. Wow, Alec Pierce went down quite a bit there. 
Uh, I did want to look at the other guy, but like I can't because if I look at him, then it's kind of like cheating for future rebuilds, you know? Once again, there are a couple of guys here that just won't be here this late, but, you know, what can you do? We're going to grab a pretty decently athletic guy, assuming this is a player that actually, one second, I got to make sure is a six-round player. Welcome to the team, Jeffrey Gunter, and he's hidden. Not that it's going to probably matter, and he's also way slower than his 40 times suggests, but okay, sneaky steal. We're going to take a decently athletic guy, Matt Hankins, the cornerback projected undrafted. Not today, buddy. Your dreams have come true. My dreams, unfortunately, do not appear to have come true as I'm not really liking the overall there. But we landed a few hiddens, and by a few, I think it really was just two. Please be good overalls, though. Lucas is on 68 overall. He's 23. Holy crap, that was a bad pick, but... You know what, it's a third rounder. It is what it is. That makes me sad, but we got a wide receiver two. We got a left tackle one. We got a potential starting safety. We got a great rotational edge, and we've got Matt Hankins. But <laughs> don't know what to say good about that, but, you know, just stating it. All right, the official year one roster. Uh, I got to admit, there's a little bit more uh, holes on the team than I would have expected. I just, uh, you know, right guard, how you doing? Uh, but left tackle, Lucas, <laughs> we'll see what happens there. Uh, the rest of the O-line is obviously great. Wide receivers, we'll see how Pickens performs, but could be set for the rest of this thing. Jonathan Taylor is obviously good to go. Tight end, we'll probably need a new one and. Once again, this is kind of not just a Gilmore rebuild, but also a Matt Ryan rebuild. So, if he plays well, gets to keep his overall, maybe goes up in overall, especially if he goes up in dev. Or, we could be looking for a quarterback very, 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 very soon. Linebacker is needed. Safety, we'll see. Uh, I forgot about Willis, to be honest, but, um, you know, he's 26. He'll play another year, but realistically, Nick Cross is definitely the guy I have my eyes on. Uh, hey, Hello. Uh, and everything else looks pretty good, so uh, we'll see what happens this season, and I believe we actually have a first-round pick now, which is pretty cool. So, Quentin Nelson, this is going to be an extremely costly contract. Uh, I don't know, I mean, it's a guard, but it's it's the guard, you know what I mean? Like, it's that guy. Uh, so, a five-year, I think, what is this, 25 per? I, I think? My math is, is it? Wait, no. What, oh, what am I thinking? Is a five-year 120 fair? I mean, it seems fair. I can't really... Th my my brain isn't listening right now, so... I mean, that's like the best we're going to get out of me. But Bobby Okariki, contract that we will be paying, a three-year 20. I don't really think there's much more to say about that. Rodrigo Blankenship, uh, I mean, in real life, they kind of like him, so uh, we'll do a three-year 10.9. What else do we have? He has the glasses and the in the little thingy too, which is pretty sick actually. Yannick Ngakwe, do not know what his uh, season's looking like. Six and a half. We're about halfway through. I mean, this man deserves a forever home. I almost just feel like he's like a lost puppy at this rate. Like nobody wants him. <laughs> Makes me sad. He's gonna get the three year. I don't honestly think this changes much for Willis to be honest, unless he was like unless he got like a hundred k XP. I think he's gone all right uh i don't know i'm not sure what we're gonna see for the playoffs and what we see is us not in them and even worse is an eight and nine season you would think bringing in a guy like matt ryan you're, you're thinking hey this is the guy that can get us there and he doesn't but what kind of season do you have i think is the most important question of them all uh, let's take a look so matt ryan with the touchdowns being so bad uh, interceptions are pretty high yards are okay uh, and Jonathan Taylor didn't even have that good of a season. This is already potentially like, you know, of course, Campbell had a pretty good season. Wish it would have went all to Pickens, but he did have a good year still. And Pittman, obviously, the number one. Lucas was awful, but he is playing the left tackle spot. So what can you ask for? Uh, pass rush, not bad, actually. Maybe an upgrade in Deb for Yannick. Uh, Savant Gilmore was amazing with five interceptions. But ultimately, uh, you know, this puts us in a weird spot because we're not going to have the premier pick for a quarterback, but I think you got to draft one, though, right? Packers versus the Chiefs, Super Bowl. The winner between those two is the Chiefs. Let's take a look if we had any dev ups. Uh, offensively, probably not, right? And no on offense. Oh, no. Yes for the DevOps, but I forgot to put the uh, XP sliders up. Damn it, I hate when that happens because it just, 
it really does ruin a lot. It really does, but fair enough. Was Quiddy Pay already superstar? I feel like he, I mean, he wasn't, but like, I thought maybe he was from a camp breakout because I remember clicking a camp breakout form from him uh, the first year, and I don't remember if I followed through or not. I don't even know. Is Blackman, he was already star, right? I thought for a second they dropped him, but that, I mean, I'm going to have to boost everything to like, like 170, like 162 probably to counteract the, normally it's on like 145. Ah, oh, great. Although I will say with the quarterback thing, kind of saves us because Matt Ryan obviously wasn't going to develop. You know, he's awful at this point. That's just fantastic. So we do have the page, uh, Jonathan Taylor, which is going to be very costly. Oh, oh. Simmons, who is an X Factor, would be some juice. Denzel Ward as a superstar. I don't know what the money situation is looking like in Cleveland, but man, that is a hard name to pass on, dude. I don't know if I can. I mean, that's just like that's the ultra juice right there. You know, the Browns aren't in the greatest spot, but they they are kind of close. They can possibly afford Denzel. I'm debating it, dude. I really want him, but I don't know if I really need him. Gilmore might be gone after this season, though. I'm going to pay him. I'm going to pay him a five-year worth 96. Nah, it's got to be more than that. Five-year worth... I mean, I feel like he's at least worth 20 per. Five-year worth 20 per, pretty much. So let's go for it. 106 offer, and that will put us at the front of the list. And honestly, with a contract like that, I think you kind of have to just, you know, not touch another thing. We had to up the offer a little bit. It ended up being uh, about 21 per, but totally worth it for Denzel Ward. And uh, we have 22 mil left, but of course, Gilmore being gone after this season. We're going to have some elite cornerback play, obviously. But with Gilmore being gone, you know, things are, are looking, you know, up. Well, going to be gone at least, of course. And we end up having pick 11. That's a little bit better than I would have thought. And honestly, we may look to trade up depending on who is there. As in teams, obviously. All right, so pre-draft trade. Uh, the first two teams are quarterback teams. And you just can't risk having a decent quarterback. So we're probably going to end up going with Anthony Richardson at number three. Uh, but pick 11, 43, and 37 for pick three. And to add on to that, I'm also going to give them a third round next year and, uh, you know, call it a day there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, ended up costing us quite a bit. Wish we'd have just kind of tanked. Could have had Stroud or, you know, maybe uh, Bryce Young. But it is what it is. But I will say we have what would appear to be our quarterback of the future. What is Matt Ryan's ratings, of course, the way he just played there. I think we're kind of in Atlanta territory where we're kind of stuck with Matt Ryan for a year, but uh, I don't actually know the details, so I'm going to pay attention to that. Uh, of course, that that hit should be a little bit higher. Then again, maybe we just took the majority of it year one, which in fairness would be very smart for them to do in real life as well. Ooh, he kind of counts against the cap about 35 mil uh, in 2023, so he's going to be, like I said... Atlanting this thing. What a lucky guy. <laughs> but of course, you look at the team. I mean, we probably need a DT number two because, you know, that morale boost just looks great for Stewart. We need a linebacker. Safety, I think we're going to give Nick Cross a shot. And uh, honestly, you just need a guard and then a tight end. But I mean, we'll see what we can do. We might even trade up for a tight end. Speaking of, I'm not sure what draft picks we even have available at this point. But yeah, I mean, we sit, bent the money we could, and we're just going to go right to the draft and avoid any more spendings. At least we have our cornerback number one once Gilmore goes. I almost pulled the offer thinking, why the hell do I even want uh, Ward? We have Gilmore and... Uh, and What's the guy's name? Kenny. Jesus, I almost forgot. Let's go to the draft. No matter what, I am not going to be taking uh, the first two quarterbacks we mentioned. Although I may, if I'm, if we get scammed here, because the game could very well do that. If Seattle and Atlanta, like, one of them takes a guy higher. But I, I think we should be good, as this is what it's likely going to happen in real life. Hey, please. Maybe, maybe that happens in real life. Who knows? Obviously, you know, it's a whole year away, but that should have been Stroud. I will say, uh, for some reason, he's not that high on the list here. We're going to be trading Stroud for Richardson. Sweet. But obviously, you know, we need a quarterback. We're taking Stroud, and we'll make the swap over, which is just 
gonna look so stupid now. By the way, I just completely forgot to uh, do my focus scouting. I just skipped right ahead. Who gives a damn? You know what I want? You know what I'm saying? But speaking of things that I want, Osiris Torrance looks really solid. Looks like a clear-cut good player. I'm gonna go to like pick 17 to 20 and whatever happens, happens. But I will say this, uh, this draft class is pretty scuffed for 2023. I don't remember where I downloaded it. Sorry if you're you know, someone, you know, famous for scouting on YouTube or Twitch or Twitter or whatever, and I'm just crapping on it. Someone that doesn't even really know that much about these drafts. But, yeah, I usually just do these, use this class for whenever it's a draft uh, or a team involving a quarterback need. Because it is a pretty solid quarterback class coming up, obviously, so we decided to do that here. And we did end up having just enough resources to get that quarterback pick. And obviously, Denver with Russell Wilson would obviously be willing to trade down a uh, you know, once again, a lot of players that are here uh, also are not in 2023. So, you know, we just live with what we live with. I don't want to trade up again because I just don't feel like it's super realistic. But I feel like I also have to because of years one's kind of bust-like draft. We had a lot of picks. Oh, man, trading up a second-round pick is harsh. I'm doing it, though. I don't care. Even if we're, like, pick 33, if this guard is as good as he looks... I'm, I'm cool with the decision, to be honest. Like, this Osiris Torrance guy looks solid. Like, look at the strength. Ooh, maybe not as solid as I thought. Oh, come on. Don't tell me I'm doing things again. Am I doing dumb things again? Like, it is, like, our biggest need by a mile. But at the same time, I probably could have waited for one of them to fall and just grab, you know, him or the other guy. Oh, this is... Now I don't even know who I want. Oh, I'm selling, dude. I am selling. I'm taking that right guard. I don't even care. Ah! Yeah, I'm going to take him. 46 bench press reps. I mean, he's a freaking tank, dude. We're going to do it. Maybe not the most athletic guy in the world, it seems. But Osiris Torrance, he's our pick. Hidden development trade, 97 strength. It'd be really dumb of me because that name does kind of sound familiar be really dumb of me if we've taken him in the past or multiple times even and i'm just like pretending or something that i i don't know he's hidden but i'm gonna be honest i didn't 100 percent know there so uh we may have drafted him before but right there me did not know he just didn't know now i don't know what kind of prospect this guy is in real life i think i looked him up and i don't even think he's projected to be drafted but we're just gonna just act like this class only matters for the nice agility and change direction there but it only matters for the quarterback so just uh, just pretend with me if you don't mind. By the way, I'm pretty sure this class had two of this Jelani Woods guy. I don't understand what's happening. I'm pretty sure it was a first round in this class. And once again, I don't want to draft too many like players that just aren't going to be good in real life or are projected elsewhere uh, or at other ranking. Uh, I'm going to even... Uh, they got a quarterback, though. Seattle, still probably the best bet even with a quarterback, to be honest. So we're going to grab Seattle's fourth round, which... Could be a semi-backfire, but it's still going to be at least 11 picks better at minimum. Could be way better, though. We got this Keandre Coburn guy. Uh, you know, decent power moves, decent strength, 90 strength to be uh, to be exact, but not bad, not bad. I don't know how good he's going to be, uh, you know, in real life, but... Well, I mean, not in real life, but in-game, but in real life, Latu is like a six-round tight end. We're in the high seventh. I'm going to grab him. He's super slow, but it is what it is. Just wanted tight end depth even though we need a tight end starter to be honest and they just took a fullback i'm kind of kind of feeling like taking it jacks d dn dinning dinning wow that's really a lot easier to say than i made it <laughs> i made that way harder than it need to be d d like really dude uh, it's literally dinning i mean it's like right there con con sauce con sauce stop like come on dude Figure it out. Figure it out, man. Uh, but let's take a look at our uh, draft class. A couple of hidden development traits. Not perfect, obviously. CJ needs to be traded over for... I don't know if we're going to be able to, but... Needs to be traded over for Richardson. Gotta love that they didn't take him. What is even wrong? Like, what is actually wrong with this game? <laughs> he's listed as a punter. They don't know that he's going to be able to go back to to what is it called quarterback they don't know that yeah here they are like what i don't even know shroud's uh shroud's freaking um dev but it wouldn't surprise me if it's probably superstar or higher 
And yet, they, they're just like, nah, dude. Nah, don't want them. We've got our 40 overall star development punter, and you're trying to take him away, and you're the enemy. All right, here's the squad for year two. Anthony Richardson, of course, is going to be the starter. I know it's a little weird because uh, Matt Ryan has, uh, you know, that ex insane money, 35 mil dead hit uh, to him this season, but... He just played so badly last season. There's just no point in keeping him back out there. I know you don't want to throw uh, a rookie quarterback into the fire, but honestly, I do. Matt Ryan was just that bad. I mean, I don't see how you could really gain experience watching Matt Ryan struggle, so there's just no point. Offense looks a little bit better with the offensive line, but we definitely need a new tight end. New left tackle isn't completely on, off the books. Uh, and wide receiver we'll, we'll look at because we did, once again, sell with Pickens quite a bit, to be honest. But, you know, we, we have the XP fix now, so we'll see what happens. Defense, cornerback should be fine. Draft a new guy, perhaps. Pay attention to what Cross can do. Uh, and then Jones, we'll see what happens with him. But let's go. Let's do it. Let's see what happens. All right, eight games down. We have re-signings. Oh, Lord. To be fair, I don't know. The running back market's weird. Like, what, what would you pay him? We're going to pay him a seven-year 107, which makes him the second highest paid running back in the league. However, if you look at the other contracts with Christian McCaffrey making 16 mil, that really didn't work out for the Panthers. Zeke, 15 mil, that didn't really work out. Kamara may never play another snap again. Dalvin Cook, not bad. Derrick Henry, probably actually underpaid. There's some guys that are a little underpaid here, but... Overall, that puts him once again second highest, once again, behind Christian McCaffrey, which the Panthers... I mean, maybe kind of regret at this point. So I feel like when it's a seven-year deal and it's, you know, your second highest paid, fair enough. You know, if, like it, if it's a one-year deal, your second highest paid, it's like, eh, but a seven-year, that means you're you're up there, right? So I think that's fair, especially since we know that the offensive line is a huge reason for this success. Of course, Pittman, we really have no choice, even though I think this is a little expensive for him, seven year, uh, five-year 73. Yeah, I mean, it's fair enough. I still feel like it is kind of like an L for us. Just because he isn't, like, he's not, I don't know, he is a big body guy, but uh, Blackman, we're going to go with a 5-year 30, which I think is fair. Safeties are really weird, so 5-year 30, I'm not going to complain about it. I don't think he would either. Uh, what else? Mo'Ally Cox is going to be gone. Obviously, Matt Ryan's going to be gone. And Kenny Moore is an interesting guy, but... Unless he plays safety, I don't really know if we have a spot. So Gilmore might actually get this one-year deal. I'm actually going to give it to him right now. That's weird to say, but... I'm going to do it. I don't care. Playoffs and shocking. Wow, really shocking is that we had a freaking game to play, but 14-3. and three, uh, It turns out if you just uh, turn around and hand it off to Jonathan Taylor, things go well as we uh, went with a run-heavy playbook. And you can see Jonathan Taylor went, went for over 2,000 yards. Anthony Richardson kind of not really playing. Uh, well, I mean, he did play all right, but... Didn't really matter too much. Matt Ryan obviously has been nothing, and I'm really glad that uh, we waited on this uh, Colts rebuild. I did a speed rebuild with Matt Ryan that went all right, but glad we went waited on the real rebuild because, once again, Matt Ryan was awful for us, and we already pretty much are getting rid of him. Uh, but a really good season for Taylor. Pittman was all right. Pickens was pretty solid. Number three wide receiver in the tight end. Kind of iffy, but that offensive line crushed it. Lucas did improve, which is nice. Uh, sack totals Yannick with 17 and a half. That man finally deserving of a contract. Well, I mean, finally somebody gave him a contract, I suppose. Killing it for us. Maybe an X Factor. Blankenship was all right. Not great, but all right. Jonathan Taylor MVP? No, he is not. Where the hell? Number five? Really? It's a little surprising, but maybe some other awards. You got the Rookie of the Year award on offense, running back of the year, O line. D line of the year and that was it but I mean running game can win you championships and who's to say Anthony Richardson isn't halfway decent so let's go in against the Bengals who are a you know recent enough Super Bowl uh you know participant 86 overall to the 84 overall Bengals hey this could be an early one I'm just saying that's what I said to, to her him him, him her seven to three <laughs> 7-3 to three still, 7-6, to 14-6, to six, Joe Mixon trying to become the better running back today, and I mean, I can't really argue against that so far, 21-16, 21-28-16, uh, to 16. offense has a chance, offense makes it close down by two, oh my, they're gonna do the thing, they, no way, 
Talk about calm under pressure. Absolutely impressive comeback there. Anthony Richardson pretty well, you know, toe-to-toe with Joe Burrow, who's obviously insanely talented. And honestly, you know, Richardson had to do more. Mixon had more, you know, better runs. Well, maybe not consistently better, but he had a huge run for a touchdown, I believe it was. Pittman 11 for 119. That's what you want to do with Pittman. 11 for 119. That's that's unguardable right there. Uh, and, yeah, Blankenship, perfect. Better kicker, question mark? Okay, we're not going to... Not going to get people mad here. Although Colts fans are like, what do you mean? We're not mad. The Ravens, a team that is also extremely beatable. Two heavy run teams. Uh, this would be a game that would be probably kind of boring, in my opinion. And over quickly. Which, once again, that's what she said. All right, going to the end of the game. Baltimore with a quick drive. They get touchdown. We get a touchdown back. Not as quick, but still got the job done. That's, I'm not going to, no, no more. 10-7, to 17-7, 17-10. 17 to 10 still, 17 to 17. Oh my, Baltimore, could you relax? We do get a touchdown back, but it took a long time. Down seven. We missed an extra point, dude. What's the situation? Third and 12. I mean, they missed the field goal as well with Tucker. What's the sitch? Are we going to win? They did it again. An insane comeback. I mean, it's not really even a comeback. It's more of a... A choke that they kind of sort of prevented. Lamar Jackson way outperformed Richardson. It wasn't even close. But Jonathan Taylor said, buddy, you're new around here. I unfortunately am not. Well, I don't know why they'd be unfortunately, but it sounded pretty sick. Jarvis Landry to the Ravens actually kind of feels foreshadowing, to be honest. They had better sacks than we did. But you know what they didn't have better than us? A better kicker. Even though our kicker missed an extra point, their kicker missed a 61-yarder. Same thing, you know. Topedo, patad, motto. I, I kid you not. I actually just said that word. The first one was not baited. I was going to say potato, patado, or tomato. And I don't even know. I can't even replicate what I just said. Tapado? Yeah, that's what I said. Never mind. I can, apparently. It's actually really easy. Once again, that's what... All right, moving on to the, what is this, the championship now? I mean, it feels like so many games, Jesus. And it's the Browns. How unfortunate. Another run game. These playoffs, these AFC playoffs have been super fun. I'd be so pissed as a fan. On the other end, you have Green Bay and Dallas, which are, I mean, pretty tough teams to beat. So this is a real test. Beating the Browns is already one tough enough thing to add as is. But then going on to beat one of those other teams in the NFC, I mean, this is a bad one. The Browns are probably feeling pretty good about themselves. I'm feeling iffy. I ain't going to lie. I'm feeling iffy. But 16-13, to 13, down by three. Their kicker missed an extra point. It's tied up. I am scared here. Offense is looking good, though. This is the kind of situation you want to be in. He we didn't miss the kick. This this kicker don't miss. He, just, he don't miss. He just simply don't miss. He, he didn't miss. Okay, so it's been a while since we've had to come and force our hand. But we may have to come into some hand. Uh, looking pretty good, though. With our chance, we hunted the ball, dude. Does anyone want to win this game? Even though we're potentially going to, you know, force the hand here. Even though we don't need to because we're about to win the... What's happening? They're going to win. There's no way, dude. Isaiah Rogers, special team extraordinaire. Gonna come in and block the F out of this kick. My timing was off. But so was the kick. The fans have seen enough running. Score. Oh, my God. Well, we're gonna have to force the hand because Anthony Richardson's a bot. What is happening? How many picks did he throw? Two? I mean, I'm forcing the hand because obviously... You know, we were about to kick the game-winning field goal with 45 seconds left. I believe there was a timeout or two on the board, and they just let it go to overtime when it would have been like a 37-yard field goal. If you're mad at me, suck it. I don't know what else to tell you. And I was going to make another joke, but, like, we are uh, we are currently at capacity for lame sexual jokes. So uh, we're going to, you know, live with what we've got. Uh, the Colts get the home win. Probably going to lose in the Super Bowl anyways, but... Getting to the Super Bowl with a rookie quarterback is one hell of an accomplishment. 28-20 to 20 in this sim, and it's going to be against the Packers. The Colts 
versus the Packers. Let's take a look if we had any dev ups. I'm trying to think maybe Pittman if we're extremely lucky, but probably nothing on offense. And no defensively any upgrades. Really, no dev up for Yannick. And in general, no dev up for anyone else. Not even Jones, who was only normal, but or the safety cross, who I really wanted to dev up for, but Either way, dev up or not, we're play facing against the Packers who have a very rough looking squad. 78 overall. Will Fuller is there. It's been so many times it seems like Green Bay's try to get him and they finally do. But let's see if it's enough. And by let's see if it's enough, I really mean can Rodgers carry that team that looks like absolute crap. 14 all. 14 to 21. Looking okay, but we're not finishing drives. The Packers... 28 points in the first half. We're down 11. Down by 3. Up by 4. Up by 7. Green Bay's choking. Never heard that one before. 3 minutes left. Down by 4. With a chance to get the lead. And they do... Th this is... I mean, this is prime Rodgers' chance to erase the choking argument. And he cannot... We win the Super Bowl. We were, I don't know how, well, I will admit, I don't know how OP the Cleveland offensive playbook is. I know it's more of a running playbook, which we've seen outside of this game. I just went with the most best run playbook or the team that's going to run the ball most playbook that I could think of. And it got us a Super Bowl win. Of course, this is a pretty good team in general, but we are still missing some things, specifically. Uh, at some decent positions like linebacker, we could use in a you know a better player. Tight end is massively underrated. Uh, well, not even underrated, just you know, it's not good. Uh, wide receiver two is still super far from developed. But Jonathan Taylor holding the fort, of course, the the cornerback play. It did matter. We did you know force a couple of uh, turnovers. It seemed, and overall, we're just able to slow down the scoring at times. You know, in that game, the 28 points in the first half, but 45 total. So, second half, they were better, but I don't know, dude. I'm not sure how we won. Anthony Richard just, uh, Richardson just came out of nowhere and just put on a performance in the Super Bowl. But if you look at, you know, the, uh, what is it called? You look at the way he played in the other games, it just doesn't make any sense. It really, like, the Packers' defense, to be fair, we were playing against a bad defense, but it doesn't make sense that our defense sucked, I guess. I don't know, dude. This is a team that I just did not expect to win this soon. And to be honest, like I, <laughs> I'm going to give it one more year just to see what happens. If we don't make it super far or we win a Super Bowl, I guess it'll be over. But if we make it close but don't win it, we probably will do another season after. But I at least want to do one more season to see what happens because it, it might have just been a little fluky. Sometimes things happen. Like, I don't want to crap on Bengals fans, but I'm going to be honest. There was a lot of things that, I mean, kind of just went right for them to make the Super Bowl. And I don't know. There's so many scenarios. Just, I mean, as a Packers fan, I know it's probably an excuse, but that I've seen as a fan – where you change one or two things and, I mean, your team's the one going on and, you know, your quarterback's not the one ta being talked about as the biggest choke artist of the sport. <laughs> yes, I'm setting up this Packers rebuild we're doing next. Of course, that's all I'm doing for this for now. <laughs> Obviously, that's not the whole point of this, but in general, it was relevant because we've seen Green Bay fall there. I can't remember what happened in the Green Bay rebuild. I've only done halfway through. I can't remember who we kept. But we definitely didn't get Fuller, I'll tell you that. We definitely didn't get Fuller, but I like it. X-Factor as well, which is a little surprising, but negotiations. Uh, we're not super rich, but we got who we want to keep. We need to replace DT. Cornerback three is kind of important, but tight end one is by far the number one replacement need. James Morgan's gone. I signed him to a two-year deal early on. And yeah, I mean, let's go to free agency, see if we have any money available which I can't imagine we do. We also probably have to pay someone as well. I feel like another lineman is probably due. Buckner, technically. Gilmore probably will be gone. So it wouldn't be bad to draft a corner. Don't know what our draft picks are like, though, because we did a lot to trade up in last year's draft. Uh, but yeah, we can't spend any money. Hines is probably going to be gone. So maybe like a fourth or fifth round running back. Tight end number one, though. Absolute need. And to be honest, I don't remember maybe one tight end in the first round that was worth grabbing maybe there's someone cheap here at tight end we can grab him just to just to play it safe but 
Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I also gave Rodgers the deal, although we are kind of down the line here a little bit. So I don't know. Trayvon Diggs. I mean, we. I mean, you could always use Trayvon Diggs, but uh, real life, Tyler Higby feels like a decent signing. But I mean, the money we're seeing here just—it's just not it. Albert O. I'll offer some stupidly bad, like one year five, which actually isn't stupidly bad, but for Madden terms, it is kind of bad. You can see eighty-one points. It's not terrible, right? I mean, he's capable. We did get Albert O. Uh, the tight ends in this class, there might be one perhaps worthy of drafting, but to be honest. Pretty bad again. <laughs> Unfortunately, Quiddy Pay, we're going to probably be looking to sign right away. So I'm going to just say no. I don't think it really matters what you say about that as long as you're not choosing yes all the way if you want to keep him uh, or you don't want to you know, pay that. Yeah, you get it. I'm not even going to go into it. I'm just slow today. Oh, yeah. We did get rid of our second round pick, which is a bit of a disaster. But I suppose considering you know the trade-up was worthy... And more importantly, we ended up obviously winning the Super Bowl. We have no third either. Okay, um, interesting. What do we want more? DT. Is there one remaining? Two, apparently. What about Winslow? I did scout him a little bit. Actually, apparently I didn't. I, I put him on the extra list. I saw, you know, he was the best uh, strength guy remaining later on. Uh, we also did have a cornerback. Uh, but Donnell Allen, very strong, pretty athletic. And then you have Mr. Gillisby, who is probably a better fit, but I don't know anything about his power or anything. I just know he's really fast. Now I'm questioning things. Um, also, we have... Where is the... Oh, is the corner gone? Damn it, he's already gone. Um, I guess we have no choice. I mean, I suppose it's Donnell Allen. We needed a DT. He's the only guy I have, like, really anything on. I'm going to grab him. Allen. Hidden. 95 strength. That's a dub. Now, we're sitting in a pretty bad spot, though. <laughs> so, we at least got that. Uh, we also have Freeman. I'm going to go to, like, the mid-third. If he's there, I'm going to grab him. But you can see, I mean, B catching decently fast. Nothing crazy special. So, I mean, at this point, when we don't specifically, because we don't really have much to trade for, uh, or, you know, trade up with. You kind of just have to let things happen. So we trade 105, 128, and 139. 139 is next year for 78, which I imagine, unless there's someone else on my board that I didn't expect to still be here is there. I'm probably going to take the tight end. Uh, what do we have? Ooh, Julian Hodge is there. I liked him for his speed because obviously you could see that, you know, the the 20 yard, the three cone looks pretty good. I don't know how good he actually is. And we're kind of down to just the tight end, and we really need one. I'm going to grab him, Isaiah Freeman. And he's hidden. Let's go. Of course, when we're talking about speed, excel, and agility, that's how you want it. If you're going to have it low in the, you know, some categories, change direction and jumping does suck so hard, but he's the new starter. I'm sorry, Alberto. Ironically enough, we're sitting on the Broncos pick. And then we're going to go to the fifth round. Uh, you guys probably seen Ben Franklin sitting there. I told you that name in our uh, Dolphins franchise was legit. I'm telling you, it happens. But let's see if he's still there, and he is not. And I'm just going to go to our next pick, to be honest. It is what it is. We don't really have, you know, anyone else. I really wanted Ben Franklin. He actually looked really good. There was a couple of Bs. I think he had, like, BBC. Yep. I was going to actually say he had three Bs and a C, but my brain just instantly went to the BBC, just like your grandmother. Really? All of our players are gone. I mean, once again, they were all day three, so anything can happen. But really, I would like to go with this guy, but he's freaking 24. What the hell am I going to do with that? Like, it's literally going to be almost older than freaking Taylor. Turk isn't really that fast. You know what? We need the running back. Turk it is. Whatever, dude. Deshaun Turk, 90 speed. I mean, just fast enough, I suppose. Six round pick. We're going to grab Tremaine Cameron. Super fast, like a 4 4 1. Uh, ew. <laughs> Not so fast, actually, but. It's a six-round pick, a late one at that. It is what it is. We haven't really done a whole lot of trading down in these, uh, you know, in this rebuild so far, in these drafts. So we're gonna do that real quick with the Browns. Had to beat them for the playoffs. So hey, you can have something. You can have this little cookie. We're gonna give you, and then pick thirty-two. I'm trying to think of what we need. Who the hell even is our punter at this rate? Like, who actually is our punter? This is the only decent punter. I'm gonna grab him. Solid kick power, ninety-one. I'd hate to see what the rest of the guys were like, cause. Like I said, everyone else was like marginal or poor. 
Like marginal decent. No, it wasn't decent. It was poor. Like really bad. But speaking of really bad, hopefully our draft wasn't really bad. 76 overall DTs, automatic starter. The tight end's only a 69, but he's going to start anyways. Once again, we traded a lot of our draft pick stuff last season. Got to get a quarterback, and we did. Kind of expected. You know, things happened the way they did. Uh, what else did I want? I kind of want to see Ben Franklin real quick. And what was the corner? I think his name was like Mason. There he is. 77 overall hidden. Wow. I mean, I still really like that ET. I don't know what his dev is. Maybe it's insane anyways, but that's a sick corner. We kind of need one, but yeah, we did need the DT more. We let go of uh, Stewart, star development trainer. Okay, I mean, we could live with that. And then I suppose I would imagine Franklin would have went in this round. There he is, Ben Franklin, 74 overall hidden. No shot, dude. I think this Brent Ben Franklin guy, I think the name, always good. That's that's my thoughts, honestly. Start of element trait. Dude's a freak, dude. Ben Franklin's insane. He's an insane athlete. I also don't know who the hell Fryfogel is. He's in every rebuild. He's the freaking practice squad guy every time. I'm sorry. I hope everything works out for you, but not on my team, man. Hope he becomes, like, the next superstar in the NFL. And, you know, it obviously would be all because of us, not because of his own hard work. And he gets some really solid uh, backup quarterbacks here. I'll tell you what. Some OGs out here. Chris, I think we already won a Super Bowl, and it's only year three. But trying to go for the back-to-back. -back. We'll see what happens. Obviously, we're going to kind of base this on, you know, what happens with the, uh, you know, the season. If it's really bad, we're just going to take our, our fluke Super Bowl at home and win it, to be honest. Or... You know, we get to the playoffs but lose wild card round. It's not really much more we can do. You know, Stephon Gilmore, he's going to be gone. Uh, Yannick's probably going to start regressing soon. He's 29. Uh, what else do we have? We have Bobby Okariki not going up. He's going to be going down, if anything. We also have the offensive line regressing hard. Uh, what else do we have? I mean, there's some positions that can obviously go up. But, you know, Taylor can't get better. Pickens is super slow to get up there. Pitt, uh, Pittman as well. Once again, O-line's going down. Defense, you know, Buckner is not a young buck anymore, if you will. He's 30 years old. So I'm not saying this is the best the team can get, but this is kind of like, you know, if you don't, if you just get the wild card and you don't win anymore, or you, you don't even make the playoffs, the, it's not really going to improve by much more. And hell, we might even lose some players due to contractual issues. We well, only have 10 mil free right now. And there are a couple of guys who are needing to be paid off of like rookie deals, I believe. So. Yeah, I mean, we might have to make bad decisions or tough decisions there as well. The bad decisions part is just me thinking forward and what we will end up doing is a bad decision. All right, let's just see how screwed we are. DeForest Buckner wants a one-year deal worth 17. I think we can do better than that, to be honest. It says we have a lot of money, but you got to remember, you know, we're, we're kind of working off of uh, off of a huge re-signing year. Quiddy Pay, a three-year 46. Luckily, he's at left end. He hasn't been, like, outstandingly great, but he's good enough for a four-year 63 for sure. Uh, Ryan Kelly, that's a tough one. A two-year deal at 31, and you're not even like X-Factor or anything like that. Um, I mean, see how good he actually is first. I mean, he's decent. He's a good power blocker, but I don't know if I can even say that's an 85 overall. Maybe you let him go. We are okay in money. Hines, you probably let go. I put him in the slot wide receiver spot a lot of times. For ourselves, and he really hasn't done a whole lot in that game, I don't think. Let's take a quick look. Uh, da -da, receiving, yeah, I mean, pretty basic stuff. Real life, way better. I don't know. Playoffs, we had a really good bounce back on the season, and we did lose to the Patriots, which may have costed us the division. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, best running back in the league again, but down year, as I said, you know, we, we did kind of suck throughout the most of this, and then we got four wins in a row, lost the final one, but... It be what it be. We're in the playoffs. That's all that matters. You just got to get there, and then anything can happen. Magic, some people would say. Of course, Anthony Richardson, touchdowns a little bit better. Picks are a little bit worse. Actually, I don't know if the touchdowns are better, but I know the picks are worse. Yards are a little bit worse. Jonathan, I mean, the whole offense just seemed worse. I mean, look at these receiving numbers. They're just all over the place at this rate. Uh, looking at the blocking, Lucas, another 12 sacks allowed season. Still good. Yannick, though has been clearly the hero of this entire thing. While uh, Gilmore's not been bad, Yannick has just been, like, the number one new addition. It's just not even close. Of course, awards, I don't really care. I don't really think anything would have happened. We're just going to go in. 
right up against these Jets. And if we lose, I mean, this is this is the decider. You lose to the Jets, and it's like, okay, I'm just going to take my fluke Super Bowl and walk home. Going to the end of the game, 7-0. The Jets with a, a lead. Now the lead is gone. They get the lead back. They're holding the lead. Now down by six we are. Down by three. Halftime score of 17-13. to 20-13. to 13. Don't let us go out by the Jets. 20, 27 to 20, 34 to 20. Offense isn't done. Is there a chance this Colts team lived by the clutch? And they may do it again, starting with the ball in overtime. Overtime rules aren't applied just yet. Third and six. I mean, you kind of have to punt it. And the Jets are looking kind of good here. Well, I mean, the only... So is this why... We sometimes see this these weird outcomes. Although there is a flag. Could be a hold, though. I mean... What? Was that me? What? I mean, it is, but, like, the ball was touched. How does this actually work? I don't really know. These rules are kind of, like, shaky to me, but... When the ball is touched, I thought anything kind of goes. Maybe he thought he was going to catch it. I don't think that's... I'm not... This is a little shaky to me. I don't know if ball placement matters or what's the story, but the quarterback is eligible to catch this. The ball is in the air touched. I don't think that's roughing, dude. That's a fluky one. I mean, they deserve to kick the field goal anyways. I'm going to back out and sim and see what happens, honestly. I mean, whatever happens, happens. That's fluky. I don't know, dude. I, I don't think that's pass interference. I think as long as the ball is touched, anything kind of goes, right? As long as it's not like helmet to helmet or something. Like, he's involved in that play. I don't know. We're going to see what's happening. And we lose. So, <laughs> it doesn't matter anyways. That's that's going to be the rebuild here. A little bit fluky of a Super Bowl win or a fluky loss. It's up to you to decide. Packers versus Chiefs. I mean... The Packers and Chiefs seem to have won every single time or been there every single time that we weren't. So, I mean, we did beat the Packers who just won the Super Bowl and have been there multiple times. With three times in a row now for Green Bay, if I'm not mistaken, two at least. It's going to be a weird one because, once again, it feels premature that we won and premature that we're ending it. But, I mean, if this wasn't our year, we're about to lose the center. We're about to lose, you know, Stephon Gilmore. Uh, we're about to lose someone else, Hines, the backup. I mean, I don't know what year it could be. Maybe I'll take a look at free agency real quick, but I don't know. I don't. I just don't see us being able to do better while losing players that were, you know, key contributors. Let's take a look at Gilmore. So, you know, he's still usable. Obviously, he's probably going to regress even harder to the unusable status, but no interceptions in 2023, but five technically when he wasn't, you know, supposed to be playing for us, uh, five in his first year with us, and three Obviously, interceptions aren't the only thing that matters, especially for guys like Gilmore, who are just island guys, kind of. Uh, you know, it's a really good signing, even though Bobby Okariki kind of just outperformed all of that. It's just not even close. Let's take a look at Bobby, actually, real quick. Bobby Okariki, what am I thinking of? Freaking Yannick Ngakwe. I mean, Bobby's okay, I suppose, but Yannick Ngakwe is the guy I'm obviously talking about here as he put up 10, 17, and 14. That, well, 17.5, excuse me. That would be immense for them. Absolutely immense. Looking at him, 90 finesse move. What is his abilities anyways? Just for the fun inside stuff, edge threat. Oh, no, edge threat. That's insane, dude. That's really good abilities. Even though inside stuff probably doesn't matter for an edge rusher. But, yeah, I mean, that's going to be the rebuild. We'll take a look at some of the ratings. But, overall, I don't really know if there's much more we need to do. Of course, the Colts aren't a team that's, like, super far away it really just comes down to getting honestly like i said maybe one more wide receiver if they get a wide receiver to come out like justin jefferson or jamar chase i mean if matt ryan plays even averagely they're probably the biggest threat for you know the new biggest new threat at least for you know afc contendership i suppose anthony richardson deep accuracy sucks i mean even anthony richardson his overall might not be the greatest but Outside of deep accuracy, he's already pretty damn developed, and you know he didn't even look that good in this series, really. Michael Pittman, great catcher. Route running's a bit lacking, can't lie. Pickens, let's take a look at him. Once again, he had a bit of a slow start, especially because we forgot to put the sliders on for XP, but solid enough numbers deep, and our quarterback kind of can't throw deep. Let's upgrade uh, Isaiah Freeman to see what his final ratings were, even though this was his 
first season anyways. Uh, how did he actually play? I kind of glanced over tight end. Wow, he actually has pretty good ratings already. But I kind of glanced over tight ends this entire series. Yeah, I mean, pretty much like Mo Alley Cox, slightly better, I suppose. Uh, what else? I don't really care too much about O-line. Sorry if you do. Actually, we'll take a look at Abraham Lucas. He was one of our higher picks. Could be a pick that the Colts make in real life. Of course, very decent. Yeah, very good pass blocker. But as far as uh, run blocking, we don't talk about, which is kind of ironic for this team. And then defensively, uh, Quiddy Pay, I suppose. He's a real-life Colt. God, that should be here several years from now in the future. Really solid, actually. Cross didn't really work out. He didn't develop right away. I mean, didn't start right away and didn't really get any developments. Obviously, he's so freaking good with that speed, but still has to, you know, progress. And then Blackman's kind of like the last guy here, I guess. He's pretty average. That's pretty much it, though. If you guys enjoyed this one, maybe leave a like. Maybe subscribe if you're new. Like I said, we do a ton of franchise stuff. And uh, next rebuild, maybe Tuesday or Thursday, no later than Thursday, should be a Packers rebuild, quote-unquote, with Sammy Watkins, but realistically more about no Devontae Adams with those two extra picks. I didn't, you know, I did a speed rebuild, but once again, speed rebuilds are just completely different. I mean, even if you did a fantasy rebuild, that's completely different to a realistic rebuild, but speed rebuild, let alone, you know, you trade off half the damn roster. So that's pretty much also knows it area, suppose a couple other moves, but that's pretty much going to be it. Thanks for watching. Maybe follow me on Twitter, Jerome P. Care as well. Uh, P. Care plays maybe for the second channel. Probably going to upload soon enough. Maybe even on Sunday or Monday. But that's about it. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, uh, see ya!